Hi, this is Dr. Shant from Algoma University, and I'm going to give a quick demonstration on how to calculate the Shannon Weiner Diversity Index uh, using data in Excel. So, what I have here is a collection of data. These are plants uh, in different plots. These are one meter squared plots, and these are biomass values for those plants, which are a measure of abundance. So, the first thing to do is to make some room here next to plot one. I'm going to insert a column, and in fact, I'm going to use the control Y function, which repeats the last command uh, done in Excel, or any uh, Microsoft program, as far as I know, uh, to enter another one. It's a nice, simple way of repeating the last function. So the first thing that I have to do, or we have to do, to calculate this index is convert uh, this biomass data into proportions. So what I'm going to calculate is the proportion of this species um, a proportion of uh, the plot uh, occupied by this species or the proportion of total biomass in the plot that this species makes up. So it's the simple way of doing that is to type equals. That's the start of every formula or function in Excel. Click on that cell because I want that. Divided by the sum of all biomass in this particular plot. close the bracket and press enter and I can see that I've got a proportion value uh, for that species. All right, So now I can copy this down to the next cell and that gives me a value but one mistake happens when I do that and that's that this sum list which should always statically be B3 to B51 changes to B4 to B52. We don't want that to happen and you can stop that by putting a dollar sign before the 3 and a dollar sign before the 51, which keeps that uh, list static. So now when I copy it down, all right, you get a different value, but you can see that, that the reference sum list is still the same while it's referring to a new B4. All right, so that's what we want. Now I can copy it down the rest of the way. But of course, I start to see that species that are unrepresented still give zero values. Now, I want to avoid that because it, uh, the, it's important later on. And there is a way to avoid it. I'm going to go back up to my first formula. And I'm going to put um, an if statement, which decides when or when not to do this. So in this case, I want it to say, uh, if this cell is occupied by something, a number, then do all that summing and, and calculate the proportion. Otherwise, do nothing. So there's a way to do that. I'm going to click right at the beginning before B3, type if, open bracket. Then I fill in a logical test. Right? So I want to say if this cell uh, is not, so that's a, a larger than, smaller than symbol uh, in a row, then two quotes equals empty. Right? So if that cell is not empty, then do all that stuff that we did before. Otherwise, and then I put a comma after that, the value if false, um, do nothing. All right, so our double quotes again, then close bracket, and press enter. Notice that, that that didn't change anything for this particular cell, and if I copy it down, it doesn't change anything for that cell. It's this next cell that it will change in, so I can copy that down, and you'll see that for all the species that are represented in plot one, I get a value, okay? And that's what I was hoping for. So in the next, column. Now I want to do a little bit more of a calculation based on the proportion values. So I want to take a proportion times uh, the natural logarithm. So I'm going to put it in brackets. Lon. Okay, that's the function you use in Excel for the natural logarithm. Open a bracket and just say, actually I'll just write pi again. So it's the log of pi again. And then close bracket twice. All right, so that's essentially, it's pretty close to the formula I'm even going to enter. So the, the asterisk there is the multiplication symbol in Excel. So I'm going to type that equals pi of this value times open bracket ln, which is the natural logarithm. You can even see that Excel tells you what it is. If you correct, type in the correct function, open the bracket. I want the ln of the proportion. Close the bracket close it again, and enter. All right, 
So this is all fine and dandy, and I don't have to worry about dollar signs because there's nothing in this formula that refers to a list that has to stay static, so I can copy it down. Works nicely for the next one, but I can see that uh, if I copy it down here, I get a value, and I don't want that. So I'm going to have to use one of my if statements again, and it's basically going to be the same if statement as before. If, open bracket, this cell is not empty, and do all of this, then at the end of the formula, I type in what to do if it's not empty, or, or what if it is empty, and that is nothing. Now when I copy it down, I won't run into any trouble. Now there's a couple of ways to do it. If I did run into trouble, there are ways, if I did leave the values, uh, the error values in, uh, I could do some other things. But the reason I'm leaving this is, is uh, because it'll be easier later on, and I'll explain why soon. Now once I've finished this, I can actually calculate the SW diversity, so I'll just short form it here, and that's simply the sum of this row all the way up to the top there. Okay, except I forgot one little thing, and it's the negative of the sum of that row. So I'm going to type in a negative there and correct that, because it's always a positive value for diversity. All right, and now I'm done, or at least for that plot. So I don't want to do that for every single plot. That's still a bit of a process. If there's any way to speed it up, we should look for it. So I'm going to in insert some more columns here. But fortunately, if we take a look back at these values, there's no, uh, these cells, there's no values in it. There are only formulas referring to the cell next to it. So if I copy these values right to here, they'll be fine. All right, so they actually do a good job for me in in addressing this new data. And in fact, if I copy all, all excuse me, if I copy both, both of these columns and paste them right here, it fills in all the new data. And you can see that it fills in the new data wherever there are data points. So um, by putting that if statement in, I can make sure that next time when these cells are actually full, uh, that it fills in those data for me. And I can copy these headings over so I know what everything is. And I can go down below and I can even copy the formula for the Shannon Weiner diversity index right over there and suddenly I have it for both. And you can see how this is a much faster process. And that's how you calculate the Shannon Weiner, well that's one way uh, to calculate the Shannon Weiner diversity index for well, using Microsoft Excel.